in the last session we saw how can we like uh, we got to know about the basics of the networking we got to know about the different press got to know about uh, some of the basic part of api we got to know about uh, the json json and we also got to know about the postman okay so now uh, let's uh, uh, get uh, some uh, get some more things about the networking and uh, let's start with the actual part of the coding of the android okay so first of all like how do you get an api so most of the uh, websites that you will be working on would be having a proper api like you would be having proper documentation you would be having proper uh, information about all the things so let me just uh, uh, give you a quick overview about this thing so So let's say we want you want to you want to understand the uh, API of GitHub. So that is quite simple. You have to just go to the API. Uh, you have to search, search. You have to search for API dot GitHub. Okay. And when you do that, you would be giving a like uh, you'd be having some developer dot GitHub dot com, and you would be having some documentation for everything. Okay. So okay. So right now, if you can see uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this there's a thing called application and the uh, the current version that that uh, the uh, github is working on though that is v3 and uh, you get the something at v3 plus json format okay and let's say so uh, okay so let's talk about some uh, specific thing uh, right now Okay, so let's say I want to use the search API. Okay, so when you do the when you open up the search API, you get a bunch of things here. Okay, so you can search repositories, you can search co comments, you can search code, you can uh, search for issues. So you can basically do a lot of searches. Okay, so let's say I want to search for the users, or I would say search for the topics. So I just go to search for topics, and then you can see I get this thing that is ha slash search slash topic. And then you get the query parameter, and you can basically like uh, uh, do this thing, and you can make a search. And this is the you can see this is an example of how this would be like uh, made or like the, how how this would be uh, made at Quest. So this is the this is the base URL of any like this, of, for this API GitHub. Okay. So that's one thing. Though, so if you're working on any application, you might get an API from the uh, from the from the documentation or there's a thing called swagger so let me just open up the swagger swagger api you also might get this thing so swagger is another thing that, that is a cool very cool tool uh, some of the companies do use this thing so like you can see microsoft uses this thing uh, a lot of other company as well so let me just show a quick example uh, I have anything yeah so uh yeah i guess could have the swagger api So if we uh, see this thing, so this is the Swagger console or so the Swagger API console. Let me give it. So in this, you get a bunch of different uh, APIs and you get a like a very good UI and everything. So you can see this is a post request. You have to make the post request onto the pet. Uh, the schema is HTTP, not the HTTPS. You can even make this uh, request the uh, an authorized request that is add an uh, add an token for this request. And uh, what else you can do? So you can like this. You you can see that this is this API is uh, like uh, bifurcated into different sections. Like you have to if you want to get the, something about the pet, you can use the pet uh, slash pet and uh, particular things as, as well. And let let's say this is a pet ID. So this is a path uh, or path dependent URL. Okay. So you can also see the the the, the response that you will be that you will be getting uh, from from this uh, particular request. Okay. And what else you can see? So here, here you can see like you can 
uh, send a bunch of strings and you can get the, uh, that information in case of JSON as well. Okay. Yeah. So you can see like you get a lot, lot of different options here. Like you can use these things. But uh, like what about uh, when uh, this uh, this thing, this documentation, they say your swagger is not, is, is not there. So how do you do, uh, do that? So that is a very important thing though. Let's say you want to start with some open source project and you want to actually like uh, start with them, start with uh, start with them contribution on, on the, uh, on the, on the project. So how do you do, do that? So uh, for example, let's open up the uh, online API.com or the coding bus online. Okay. Let's go to there. So when you open up this page, you might get a login page. You have just have to log in. Okay. So let's log in. So let's say this is my page. This is my, uh, my courses page. I do have a lot of courses and uh, I can like go to the dash, uh, sorry, buy courses page and I can open up, open up this page as well. Okay. So this is a, uh, this is my basic information. So uh, this is one thing. So if you see, uh, if you see, if you're seeing anything here, that is basically coming from the API, like this background, this text, this uh, URL link, this uh, prices, everything is coming from my API. So how do I get that API or how do I, uh, like, how do I inf get, get to know about the API? Like what is the content? How do I get to process the data? How, how do I, how do I know about this thing? So, uh, right now we don't have any documentation of this, uh, for this project or this, uh, uh, API. We don't have any documentation of that. We, we might add a documentation at some point, at some point in the future, but not right now. Okay. So how do you get started with this thing? So you have to do one thing. So if you're using Chrome, so you have to just right click on the home page, on the page and you have to go to inspect. Once you do that, you will be open up, uh, you will, you will, uh, you will get a uh, page similar like this. Okay. That is called a developer console or, uh, or a Chrome console. You can uh, say that there is anything. Okay. So here you can like do anything. You can do a bunch of things here. Like you can modify this, uh, like you can modify, modify some uh, data here. That would be like static data, uh, static data. or like you could, you could uh, go to the console, you can do sources or you can just go to network. Okay, so there are a bunch of different things. Okay. So right now you can see they, we have like different section there. So we have XHR, we have JS, we have CSS, we have doc, other and manifest another. So now let's go to the XHR and right now you can see there is no nothing here. So let's do one thing. Let's reload the page. Okay. So if you see here, when I reload the page, I get a lot of requests here, a lot of information here. So I do get a lot of things. First of all, which, which I get thing, uh, uh, which the thing I get here, that is a call that is called a dashboard banner. So let's open up that API. So you get this thing that that is preview and you can just open up the data and like you can see you have some data like attributes, uh, you have some uh, relevant. So you have the image URL. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, just uh, open up this URL. So we have two URL that is mobile image URL and an image URL. Let's open up this URL. And just go to the browser and take a look at this URL. So as you can see, this is the URL basically, which is displaying here. Which is displaying here. So this is the thing you, which you, which you get uh, from the API. So if you're getting something from, uh, from, from an API like this, this information that you are showing here should be also from, should be also from my API. So for that, let's say, Okay, so we have a thing called courses. So we have something like courses, uh, courses, and we in that we get a list of all the courses that we want to uh, display. So that is like C++ standard template library. Then we have, uh, yeah. Then we have computer programming. So you can see there are like there are a bunch of different courses, and this will be like different for each and every course that you open. Okay. So also uh, you can see like you get a lot of different data as well. That is you get runs, you get tags. 
so it might uh, depict upon or like uh, correspond to different information like runs can uh, correspond to this information that you are seeing here and then you can see tags here the tags might correspond to this thing okay so then uh, this uh, these things will be different for uh, like different courses so like that is not uh, really important here so okay, let's go to the courses Okay, I do get here. Okay, so first of all, let's go to the header page. So when you when you go to the header page, you see a bunch of things. So first of all, is your request URL. So the request URL is here is online slash API slash coding box dot com slash API slash v two. Then career tracks, then four, then relationship slash courses. Okay, so. I'm pretty sure that uh, you might be able to understand this thing that this is a uh, like a URL and uh, here if you see we have like a number. So this number is basically a path on which like uh, things if I do change this path, I would be like uh, redirected to a different page. Okay. So after that we have something like a request code or sorry uh, a status code and a request method. So uh, this is a get method that is you have to get some data. Okay, that is that makes sense. You are just, just you are just getting the data and you are displaying the data. You are not actually doing. You are not sending any data. Okay, or not. You are not uh, doing any. Uh, you are not modifying anything. So that should make sense. After that, you get a status code of two hundred. That is, uh, you were like successfully uh, got the data. You have you like you can move forward with this data. Okay, there was no error. Okay, what else you can see? Okay, so uh, here you can see like you have the schema of HTTPS. And uh, that is pretty much the same thing uh, that you have seen like in the above uh, URL in the different here. So one more thing to learn about here is that uh, this uh, authorization. So this authorization is basically the token of the current user or the logged in user, which is required to uh, get some information. Although if you are not logged in in this case, you should be able, able to get this information because this is an open URL. You should not be required like this page, this uh, courses page is uh, uh, like this is available to everyone if you are logged in or not. So you can uh, like uh, watch this page, but like if you are logged in, then you can like send the token like this. Okay. And uh, what else do we have? Do we have anything else? So I guess that's it. Uh, so. These are the few things that you should know about. Okay, so you have response, you have preview, and this preview is basically the information that you will be getting when you make this you are uh, this when you make this call from anything. Like if you make this request from a postman, you'll be getting the same data. So let let's do one thing. Let's uh, like make this request from the postman. Copy this thing. Sub open the postman, and try to make a call. Okay, so I have uh, this thing. Just paste the URL. Okay, so what did I miss here? Okay, uh, I think should work. Okay, Let's try with this thing as well. Yeah, okay, so like uh, they might have been like uh, th the token would have been required uh, by this uh, in this case, uh, but uh, I was pretty sure that this uh, token is not required. But anyway, so like, as you can see, like uh, the, you get the information from this uh, uh, from this uh, API, and you can like see this thing. Okay, so you, you, you get the data, you get the attributes, you get the image and everything. So let's uh, see that thing as like why did we get this thing. It should work. Pretty sure that it should work. Yeah. 
this is working so if you can see here like you get all the data for a particular course so the data that you are seeing here that is uh, the section the each and every section so this information is part of this uh, api and you're getting the data from here that's a lo very long uh, list of contents so, so you have to like you have to use a list so you have to use array something okay so that is how you actually like get the information from the api or from the url okay so if if there is no documentation you have to like uh, inspect the chrome browser and like you have to get the api url and that's it so yeah so that was all about uh, getting the information of the api uh, if you don't have any documentation and if you have the documentation you can just go to the website and just uh, take a look at the documentation okay so that's one thing so uh, now let's talk about some of the android core part so for android networking we would be using a third party library called uh, okhp and retrofit so uh, uh, before we like uh, start with that library let me just uh, give you an overview about the uh, networking part of the android so if you talk about uh, networking so in the initial days of the android uh, there was a library uh, there's a method called http url connection so that was used to make uh, a network request and you have to like get the request and you have to like uh, do everything manually so that was not very feasible and that was not very convenient to the users so that's why uh, like all, all the developers i would say and uh, so that's why people uh, started making up uh, different libraries there's a library called volley that is uh, that is being for the google developer like if you go to the google developer docs you might see that uh, volley library that is part of the google internal uh, code base now but uh, initially that was not the initial uh, the the internal code base that you have to add another library for this thing so let's go to the library called volley So now this is part of the uh, like uh, the android uh, android core so initially this was a like uh, uh, that was in that, that that was a separate right library you have to like add the library into the into your code base okay you can you can use volley if you if you like the volley but uh, i generally don't uh, prefer to use volley because uh, i tend to see feel that, that that is much more complicated uh, when you talk about big projects and uh, that is not uh, really i would like uh, that is not really worth the time i should be like uh, I, I i personally don't, do not prefer to use volley i generally tend to use okhcp or retrofit okay and uh, you can uh, like search for different different uh, different libraries as well there are a bunch of libraries that you can use but uh, i would like uh, in this uh, series i would be using the, the retrofit and the okhcp okay so let's search about the OKHP. So, okay, OKHP is an open source library that uh, has been made by Square uh, Open Source. So Square is a very big uh, company which uh, does a lot of open source work. And uh, there's a name called Jake Watton. You may have heard of the name. So that is like God of uh, Android programming. People like praise them, uh, praise him, and like uh, he's the he's the master of everything. Like uh, uh, he's the he he is the big daddy of uh, Android. So, yeah, so he has made the library, like, he has worked on the library. I wouldn't say that he made the library. There are a bunch of people who made the library, not uh, not, not an individual. So, uh, so yeah, so let's uh, open, up, open up this library. See? So, there's a very good uh, API uh, documentation here. So, you can just read about this documentation. You can, like, uh, you can just try to uh, do, uh, do, them, uh, do something on your own. You can like see like this OKHP works on Android a API uh, 21 plus and 5.0 plus or you can say. Uh, you can like use a mock web server, you can use different inter interceptors, you can use HTTPS and you can use caching. Uh, so we would be going through all of these things uh, when we start with the code. But uh, like uh, I guess that's uh, that is one now. And let's talk about the another library that we would be using. So that is called retrofit that is again made by square that is again uh, the uh, that is again made by the uh, square so you can see there is uh, like there is uh, again a very good documentation here you can like read about the documentation try to work it uh, work it with the java or the or the kotlin code whatever you feel like okay 
and uh, along with this uh, you should be aware of this uh, basic thing that like jason jackson moshi even proto buff uh, okay so we would be uh, we would be going uh, over the over few of them like we would be understanding how jason works and we might also try to use jackson or moshi okay so so yeah you can like try this out so yeah i guess that should be it so what next uh, should we do so i, I would suggest uh, that uh, like before the next uh, webinar you should have some question if you if you are like if you want to ask me some question you can ask me ask them in the live chat or you can just drop the comment drop a comment in the in the in the comment box okay so in the next video we would be starting with the retro uh, we would be starting with the okay should be part and uh, we would be understanding how json works or the g7 works in the android along with that uh, there are two three different methods to in order to like do networking so for that uh just open up some youtube series for this thing okay so there are two things you can do so first of all is uh, your async and async programming uh, there is a very good webinar uh, of Arnabi you can just uh, take a look at that then uh, you have something like implementing an async replacement using coroutines because uh, if you are like using uh, Kotlin you can the thing called coroutines and that is the like a new way of doing uh, network programming or the asynchronous programming in Kotlin because the async programming or the asynchronous methods are like deprecated in Android and you cannot use them in android 11 yeah you cannot use them in android 11 and i'm pretty sure you cannot use them either in android 10 as well but i'm uh anyway so yeah so you cannot use async uh, task so in order to use this thing you should be aware of the coroutines or you can use the retrofit callback methods but uh, like uh, you would like i would be covering both of them i would be using the callback methods and i would be using the uh, the coroutine as well but uh, I would be doing both of them in the Kotlin lang language. So like if you have any questions regarding the Kotlin language, like where do you start from or where do you like, uh, where do you like learn the basic syntax of, of Kotlin? You can like ping me or like you, you can just go to Kotlin. So there's a th very nice thing here. So coding was Kotlin, uh, something like that. So yeah, so there's a webinar called Kod using Kotlin and Android. You can just wa watch this thing or you can either watch this thing. Or yeah, then you can go to the course uh, of coding bus online. There's a course on Kotlin as well. So you can do any any of this any of that. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, you should also aware of the callbacks or I would say higher order function, lambda function, or coroutines. You should be aware of any one of them in order to like use this thing. And uh, I would also suggest you should uh, have a like you have a you should watch the video of asynchronous asynchronous programming. And why it uh, it is required in in case of networking. Okay. So I guess that's it about this uh, webinar. In the next video, uh, in the in the next uh, webinar, we would be starting with the actual code, and uh, we would be learning uh, how to make simple network requests using uh, using OKCP, and uh, then we move out to different things. Okay. So I guess that's it. Thank you.